Uh, Dr. Godsby, you said this week that we're in an era of hope and an age of development. What will these CGRP drugs mean to the millions of migraine sufferers who struggle with attacks of disabling pain? Well, the CGRP monoclonal antibodies, these new medicines that are being developed, are going to offer real hope for patients with, uh, with migraine, particularly with frequent migraine. They're preventive medications. They'll reduce the frequency and they'll reduce the severity, and it looks like they're going to do it with virtually no side effect penalty. So uh, they're said to be the first drug specifically designed to prevent migraines. Can you talk about how they're different in form and frequency and function from the tryptans and ergotamines that many migraine sufferers rely upon today? You're quite correct that uh, the CGRP monoclonal antibodies are the first mechanism-based specific anti-migraine preventive treatment ever developed. Several years ago, we saw the development of the triptans. Mm -hmm. There are migraine-specific treatments of the acute attack. Mm -hmm. These new treatments are designed to prevent the attacks coming, and that's the, that's the, the real excitement um, for, the, for the migraine sufferer who just has far too many attacks. In contrast to current medications that migraine patients have, which are typical, which come from other places, so um, your patients listening to this will be familiar with taking blood pressure medications or anti-convulsants, anti-fit medications or antidepressants, a range of sort of ragtag things that have come in to migraine. This for the first time, doctors will give migraine patients a migraine drug for prevention. That's a total sea change in what we're doing and I think patients will understand that almost faster than the doctors will. Another advantage with these medications is they'll be given by injection. Huh? It's a needle, maybe that's not an advantage, but they'll be, <laughs> given, they'll be given once a month. Um, so instead of taking a medicine every day or twice a day, you remember it, and being constantly reminded of the, of the fact you have migraine, the injection frequency we think will be no more than once a month, and in, actually maybe, uh, maybe less than that. So it will free people as well from the sort of daily grind of being a migraine sufferer if, if you want. So is it true that some patients in the trial have actually seen their migraines disappear? Yes, extraordinary. The, for both of the studies that have been fully reported, there are a small proportion of people um, at, th at three months it's about 15% more or less and uh, at, at six months it's a little bit over 10% who, where their tax stopped and didn't come back. Which is amazing. It's, I dare to use the word cure, but... Yeah, I mean, you have to remain conservative about these things. I, I have to say, I'm not a negative person, actually, but I, I think it's probably not a cure. But on the other hand of that, if, if I offered a patient, any patient of mine, three or four injections a year, and they never had any migraine, after, and that was what all that they had to do, it would be pretty good. It would certainly be a hell of a lot better than what we've got now. Is complete remission a better term? complete remission. Or partial remission yeah. for many. But, well, for, yeah, for many. Uh, so what we, what we typically look at are 50% responder rates, so about mm -hmm. half the patients, a little bit more, will have 50% of their attacks go away. About 30% of people will have 75% of their attacks go away, so three-quarter reduction. Mm -hmm. And then, as I say, about a little bit under 20% will have all their attacks go away. I, I think if you're sitting listening to this and you've got 20 days of migraine a month. The idea that 15 would go away, that's a pretty good deal. And even 10 would go away is, is a substantial improvement in terms of uh, disability. Because it's not only the migraine day, of course. It's the day before when you don't quite feel right. It's the day after when you're recovering it mm -hmm. from it. Migraine's not just about the attacks. It's about living with this sort of fog, for, particularly for chronic migraine patients, living in this kind of fog of abnormality, which never really allows them to do all the things they want to do and reach full potential that, that, that they're entitled to. Are there certain patients that uh, may see greater benefit from these CGRP drugs, um, like patients with uh, uh, heart problems for whom tryptans might be a problem? Well, that's a great question. I mean, there's two sorts of parts to that there. Can we work out who's going to do better with these medicines um, of, of migraine sufferers? The answer to that at the moment is no, but mm -hmm. everyone's really keen on the question. The, the other part that you alluded to is because they're very well tolerated, we haven't seen any side effects across any of the programs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from a patient point of view, the N, if you like, the number of people have been exposed, and not just in one company's program or another company's program or another company's program, across all of them. So the, there's a very reassuring 
right across the patch lack mm -hmm. of uh, side effect problems. And that means for the person with heart problems, uh, the person who passes out when they take their uh, a drug that, or gets dizzy when they have a, mm -hmm. a blood pressure medicine, the person who puts on weight when they take a, one of these medicines, a person who has cognitive dysfunction, can't get their head around ordinary speech when they take one of these medicines, that's not going to happen. So these are in phase two clinical trials right now, and you really cannot predict, but the NBC News report referenced four years it would take for these drugs to be available. Do you have any better sense of how long it will be before they'll be available to people from their local doctor? You're right. These medicines have all finished phase two, where, and, and, and that means in, in development of medicines that you work out something works and you work out what dose to you. In phase three, you get more data across a larger group of people to make sure that A, you're right, that it does work, and B, that no other, no safety issue comes up in larger uh, exposure. Phase three is a, little, is a little bit more time consuming at some level, although there's a lot of development that's gone on beforehand. I think the, I mean, the answer obviously is you don't know until these things hit the door of the various uh, regu regulators. I think that three or four years is, is, probably at, is probably the top estimate, I would say. I think regulators, as for much as people are a bit sort of negative about regulators, I think they, are, they get it. Um, my experience with the FDA is that they know what they're doing, they understand this is, that migraine is a serious problem, and, they're not, and they don't diddle migraine companies around when they've got a, a serious development. So, so I think that I think we could be, what can I say, cautiously optimistic that it won't be as long as, uh, as, long as four years, unless there's mm -hmm. a bump in the road I have, haven't. Looked at. Are there still opportunities for patients to participate in clinical trials? Oh yes, if uh, patients go on clinicaltrials.gov, uh, there's the simplest way of finding it, and search for uh, migraine, uh, my, if they put the word in migraine space CGRP, then they'll probably pick up most of the clinical trials that are going on and there are contact numbers and there's plenty of availability. And I would encourage people to do that. If patients want this to be available sooner, then the studies need to be done quicker, in which case people need to step up to the plate. Because at the end of the day, um, it's a, the problem is a problem of migraine sufferers. And if migraine sufferers want new medications, they, it's important that they're part of, the pro, part of the process. And it would help if, the, if they do that. So until these drugs are available, what do you advise your patients uh, as the best standard of care for migraine prevention and treatment? Migraine patients listening to this will know that if you take a one two fits all approach, you'll have a lot of people with uncomfortable feet, meaning that migraines are it's a complex problem and it has to be seen in the context of the individual that has it. The best advice for a migraine sufferer is not about an individual drug, but is to find a physician who's interested in the condition and knows something about it, who wants to work with them to work to, to get to the best current treatment. Because mm -hmm. there are more than half a dozen preventives that, you, that one could use. And there's no one that, you, that I would use in all patients. I think the important thing is your person knows how to use them. So my advice to migraine sufferers is seek out people who are interested. Seek out people who know. Um, and, that, and that way they'll get the best that's currently available for them. Terrific. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.